No, I am not dressing up like a pirate just to talk to you about T-Mobile's Blackberry Pearl. She's a good phone, but just like Johnny Depp's ship, she has a curse, or two. With its glossy black and pewter finish, the pearl is more like a black pearl. It's not the finish, but the size that you notice when you hold it. Along the slim sides are USB port and headphone jack on the left. There's a programmable key on this side, and another one over here on the right. The volume keys above are easy to find without looking. The Pearl is the first BlackBerry with a camera, which is joined by an LED flash on the back. These two gold squares are actually a charging connector for desktop stands. Under the cover lies a rather large battery. Thanks to its size, the Pearl can go an average of four days between charges. The microSD card is unfortunately hidden beneath it. There'll be no hot swapping for you. At the top is a button to quickly mute incoming calls. Hold down on it and it also turns off the screen and locks the keys. The new trackball, for which the Pearl is named, finally frees the BlackBerry from one-dimensional navigation and lets you scroll horizontal as well as vertical. Unfortunately, T-Mobile's default theme, which you see here, doesn't take full advantage of this new dimension and primarily works up and down. The SureType keyboard, which has a QWERTY layout but with two letters per key, is surprisingly natural to use. The first place you get to try it out is using QuickDial. As you type out a name on the home screen, the Pearl searches through the contacts and lets you quickly call that person. Press send and the number is dialed. If you type it all, you already have a good idea where most of the keys are on a keyboard. Getting used to SureType wasn't too difficult, but in some cases, it took a while to learn which key a letter would be on. You knew it would be one of two, but which one was the question. At first, the keyboard feels good and solid, but very quickly, the rubber sheet that the keys are mounted on wears in, and then the keypad is neither solid nor responsive. You can see as I rub my thumb across the keys, they shift around and move, instead of staying solidly in place. After about two weeks, the keyboard is so worn in that you can barely feel the keys click as you press them. Despite this issue, the SureType predictive text software and QWERTY layout make typing easy. We're pretty quick on the phone scoop test. I told you this theme doesn't show off the trackball very well, but there is one that does and by activating it, you can see how truly old-fashioned the interface of the Pearl is. It's more like using DOS than a phone. Nearly everything is displayed in a text list, with no graphics or even formatting. Sometimes, if you're lucky, there's a horizontal line. And there's quirks galore. For instance, every time you switch themes, the font changes, and not to anything good either. Here, we'll switch to Clarity so you can actually read as we show you the rest of the features of the Pearl. The main email and messaging screen is one of the few that RIM clearly put a lot of thought into, probably because this function is so central to the BlackBerry. Icons in a line of bold text clearly mark each message on the list. Unfortunately, the formatting of the message itself is plain text. No wonder I've overheard so many people saying they find reading long emails on their BlackBerry difficult. SMS and email are displayed together in the list. The only way to find an SMS message is to find the slanted icon. If you just want to view email messages, you can choose an email-only list for that. It looks and acts the same as the main messaging list. The Pearl is the first multimedia BlackBerry. It doesn't just have a camera, it has a music and video player as well as a gallery to view your pictures. But unfortunately, they're all part of the same application. This means you can only work with one type of media at a time. When you select the media application, you have to select what type of media you want to see or hear. The music player can play MP3 or AAC files. It can only play music from one folder in order of track name. No, it can't even shuffle them. If you dig through the options, you can reorder the files by date, which is kind of like shuffle. There are some basic navigation controls, but you have to use the menu to access them. All you can do from the player screen is pause or stop the play. Music can play in the background, as long as you don't want to look at your pictures or other media while it's going. As soon as I hit the back button to navigate up in the media application, the music stops. We'll leave it off to take a look at our pictures. The gallery is the only application that doesn't use a list of text. Instead, it uses thumbnails, which makes sense. But all in all, the media application feels like a novice effort, 
which wouldn't be such a big deal, except that most other phones have been doing this for years, and are much further ahead. But the camera is pretty good, in addition to, well, you know, the push email, and the quick dial, and the long battery life, and the QWERTY keyboard.